Hey, what's up, y'all? It's me, Tasha C, and yeah, you see this right here? Yeah, that that's a great spot. <laughs> uh, couple of us on my mom's side, we great counter early, but anyway, I know that's irrelevant, but I'm just, if y'all paid attention over there, yeah, that that's a great spot. Anyway, so, tonight I'm reviewing The Real World after it's, you know, it's a little hiatus. Um, has returned back, um, what's this episode? Five, six, whatever. I'll put in the description box on the wall. But, of course, even at the end, to make us tune in for next week, they leave us somewhat with a crew of Tanger, okay? We already seen the previews, gonna be a couple fights in the pregnancy, uh, test fiasco. Somebody in the house is pregnant, but we all knew between it could have been either, um, uh, um, Jenny or Lauren because they were asking um, Corey that he wasn't wearing comments said no so most of us probably figure it had something to do with between that love triangle well okay there's a lot of back and forth in this, but let's get the situation out of the way first let's do the Thomas James Haley type of situation uh, but picked up exactly where it left off um, when they're at the park and Thomas talking about you know about the whole titles thing and um he sat there and he was just like, you know what, um, why do you have to deal with titles? And Jamie's like, you know, any relationship or we're not in a relationship type of thing. And then Jamie's just like, you know what, forget it. And then, you know, they basically break up. Okay. You know, Haley catches on. But, you know, well, first, no, Jamie actually asks Thomas, like, okay, not to break up the past or anything, but did, did, weren't you, or what were you and Haley? And he was like, we're well, boyfriend girlfriend. So Jamie's like, why do you have a problem being titled with a boy? Big girl now, which we fast forward later on about his reasons about why he doesn't like titles, so to speak. And so, anyways, um, he ends up, up saying this. He was just like, you know, they ended there. Haley catches on, so they're leaving out the park. And Haley's just like, you, you know, do you want me off the show? You want me to leave? And he's like, Actually, I want everybody to leave except the, the original six and stuff like that, whatever. He kind of feels like, I think that, you know, Haley was on there, you know, didn't have good attentions anyway, being on the show. And, you know, Haley, when they get back, um, Corey and Jay find out that actually, hey, uh, Haley, um, hey, um, sorry, y'all, uh, too many triangles. You know, Thomas and Jay broke up and they were just like, huh? And, you know, uh, you know, they tell Haley, like, well, you know what, he's probably just confused right now because he obviously still has some feelings for you. You know, I'm just paraphrasing, of course, as usual. And it kind of just ends to uh, the night scene. Now, um, Jamie is putting on makeup, you know, she doesn't want anything to do with Tom Simon's trying to, like, hey, you know, we need to be cool, you know what I'm saying? You know, I still have to, she's just, like, you know, putting on a concealer and shit, like, you know, foundation, like, it's fucking my face type of <laughs> type attitude. And then, you know, they go to the nightclub, but the feelings are still there, okay? She, Jamie's like, I'm single rated Mingle, but as soon as she sees Thomas and his hand up here, um, a little bit near uh, Haley's knee, she has to stop and tell him, you know, don't do that, you know. And, but she admits that even though she sees all these guys, she decides her only folks she want to focus on is Thomas. Because she already feels like in the professional, she says, Haley's. Sorry, y'all. Uh, but anyway, you know, she wants to bring up the fact that, you know, Haley is not as innocent as she seems like. You know, her attention is in, she wants to get back to Thomas, okay? So, Thomas still does have those. So I think it was the same night. Oh my gosh, I don't know why this fight is comical. Or the next day, um, Haley picks up the phone and it's Hannah, which is, um, Jamie's best friend. And she's like, that's the bitch I want to talk to. And the next minute, in between, you know, Tom, when she said, um, Thomas broke up with me, she's just like, huh? Thomas hears it, of course, there ain't no goddamn doors. Um, they all got on mic, so we all know how that goes. And, um, he comes in there, you know, to try to get, he asks us for the, he, I don't know, he gets the phone from, um, Jamie to talk to Hannah to let him, I guess, like, say his side of the story. And, and Hannah's just like, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to Jamie. You know, basically, like, basically, I'm watching the phone. Oh. So, he gets up, you know, you know, she gets off the phone with him. He's basically like, you know, then they start doing like this little immature, <laughs> not, not really on James, but Jamie, Jamie's just like, you know, I don't want to talk to you. He just, ah, back and forth. They just like, whatever, whatever type of situation, you know, what I'm talking about. We don't have to go play, play about that. But he just, yeah, so I forgot he made some, I guess he felt like, um, Jamie thought it was an immature reaction to the situation because Jamie's just like, well, you know what, you know, forget you type of thing. And next minute, <laughs> 
She was like, you know what? You're just a man child. And here go the friend of Man child! Man child! Okay. Oh, all right. Ooh, her friend, if she visits, that would be an interesting episode. Uh, really, I don't know. They don't. They got too many damn people are in that house and says, I don't think they need any more, more invited guests at the moment. I don't think so. So, in the end, to fast forward, now there was another scene he was talking to Haley, um, and he ends up saying, because he, you know, he has a conversation with his dad, and his dad's just like, you know, take it day by day, you know, don't think so far in the future. He may not be even liking this girl. He was telling him about the situation. Now, this is when him and Jamie still was kind of like, you know, Jamie had her, um, great wall of China up, literally, or, you know, just had the biggest wall, uh, wall up that she could, so he could, you know, just, you know, one's coming in. And he's just like, you know, he, you know, he still has feelings for her, talks to his dad. He even talks to Haley. Now, here's the interesting thing is, he tells Haley, um, in the pool area, whatever, that he does not trust anyone. And it's really because of her. And because she lied about him, that was something very important. When he lost his virginity, she, he wanted to lose his virginity to someone else who was not touched yet or tampered with. And, it turns out he finds out later on that somebody, you know, broke the Honda quicker than he is. I'm sorry, I mean, be graphic, but I mean, I'm just saying. So, um, he felt very offended about that. And, you know, Haley was a confession, like, she's just like, here is basically, uh, Mr. Thomas is not so much as nice guy with things. He thinks he's like, He's got his cake and eat too. We're me, actually me and Jamie are the victims. And he got his cake and got sprinkles all across the cake. And he also has a milkshake with whipped cream on top because he has some other um other ones, I guess, where, where they can, uh, live at. Um, so, you know, it's one of those type of situations. But he does make up with Jamie and he realized later on he makes Jamie he realized he does care for her. And he's like, I'll take back that boyfriend title. And Jamie's just like, okay. You know, we'll take, she's just like, well, next time, but if you break up with me again, we, we, we can't even do the France thing, okay? Just, just, just cut it, okay? I, mean, I ain't got time for that mess, okay? But by the way, did y'all pay attention? Usually I don't pay, sometimes pay attention unless a, a song grabs my attention. You know, they make sure they put in a lower bottom of the screen what song is playing, you know, to stand out, you know, in the scene. And did y'all notice the time when it was that man child scene when they have an argument with the man child, Hannah and Jamie and them? Why did y'all see asking Alexandria? Um, you know Jamie's ex um, boyfriend's band had a song there. It really stand out. That's a good plug. I'm just saying that was pretty interesting. You know. <laughs> so, anyways, let's get back to fast forward. So supposedly they're going to work it out, and now they're boyfriend and girlfriend at the time being. Yeah, I don't think it's too much. Let's get into the Brian and Jenny situation. Um. Again, they're friends. First, they're friends. It's like one minute is peaceful, one minute is not. You know, um, he's massaging her back with lovely massage oil, talking about relax her shoulder muscles and everything. And then the fast forward, he admits a couple times through this damn episode again that he still feels a little bit uncomfortable of thinking about, you know, her being with Corey and still thinking some chemistry there. Corey's already has been, you know, later on, you've been seeing him, we've been seeing him around more so Lauren throughout, unless it's some editing stuff, but we've been seeing him more so being, whether he likes it or not, um, he's been around Lauren more. So, I don't know, I, I don't think I've seen him say hi once uh, between Jenny and Corey this episode, did they? Okay, but, you know, one of the scenes that fast forward, because like I said, it's basically a toxic on and off again, you know, train wreck with those two. There's a love, there's a hate. There's a love, there's a hate. So let's fast forward. Like I said, I ain't got, I'm not gonna go through all the details. Arlene, like by the way, Arlene Ashley, they still in good terms. I think until preview show next episode. So they're like, even though they're in shock about everybody moving together, they still are just level headed. But I'll bring up Arlene a, a little bit with this Brian situation. So that's the only time I'm gonna bring up her. So, anyways, one of the times. When they go out to, I guess, some, you know, pub or something like that, right? And Jenny's just, like, extra hyper, and Brian just, like, does, you know, he wants to be safe. He feels like, of course, Jenny has, you know, multiple knees or something going on. And, um, she's all, all of a sudden, she just, you know, all like this, like, she just, and even in front of the voice, she is all like this, America, fuck yeah! And just, she's, 
I mean, she was just, <laughs> she is just, you know, a very, a, a very hyper person. And, you know, he's a talking outside. He's just like, about, you know, calm down. This is about your behavior. And again, this is one of the times he brings about the Corey situation. You know, how before I got on the show, you got involved. Who were you involved with? And she was just like, Corey. But she's just like, you know, when in the end, fast forwarding, you know, I'm just paraphrasing. In the end, you know, after all this, I do come back to you. And he's like, well, after everybody, you know, bangs, you know, screws to get a turn or something, right? And so, um, She's, of course, it gets offended, and she's just like, I don't want to talk to you anymore, blah, blah, blah. And then, eventually, later on, I think, even when they're saying Puffy, Tom sounds able to talk to her. Then, of course, next goddamn day, or whatever day this is, whatever, right? Like I said, it's just a yo-yo effect with these two. Um, there was another scene where they were at the beach, and he, she basically, of course, Lauren Hayden seemed to be the closest out of them. I don't usually, Jenna kind of, um, kind of, you see her more so around Jay as far as right now, or she tries to stay out of, out of mess or whatever, or just kind of, they make it seem like she's more of a loner, she just more so around Jay, maybe the other cast members, I don't know. And they were just talking, you know, like I said, Haley and Lauren were talking about the, the thing about, you know, about being emotionally, uh, you know, they rather, they're, they were, would be more pissed off if their guys were emotionally attached, or, you know, Lauren said, I actually would be more, um, no, Haley was like, I actually be more pissed if I see my my guy, whatever, um, arm around another chick or ex guy, whatever, than him have sex with her, you know. Okay, you know. And um, so it's the same thing with Lauren. Lauren was like, because, you know, Jay, like I said, they were talking to Jenny a little bit around this time. And Jenny was just like, you know, like, well, it was never anything emotional. Because, you know, Lauren, like I said, also feels the same way, where she's kind of like, you know, as long as you be upfront and it's basically like I guess it's more it's more hurtful also to her if it's emotional as opposed to sexual. But then she says to um Jane uh, to Jen that she didn't feel threatened by her, but I'm even though the confessional I'm just saying, you know, it did seem like a little bit she was saying like she was going to see if she still was a chance for her and Corey. So wasn't that kinda of, okay, never mind. <laughs> I'm just saying she was saying at first that when they, they were moving to the house she was going to try to see if there was a chance for her and Corey. And try to stop whatever between her. I, maybe I'm I, maybe I'm wrong, or you know, it's been a minute since I've seen that episode, so I could have sworn that she was, but she, she's not threatening. Or maybe she wasn't threatening anymore once she seen how things were running, or how just that quick they would be butt naked ass in the showers, you know, a couple hours after, uh, you know, they were able to bond as soon as she seen them again. So she I guess she didn't feel threatened once she seen it for herself, you know, or whatever. I don't know. That's just how I see, it. but. So, anyways, um, Brian and her, oh my gosh, another time where we sit here, she just, with the knife or whatever scene, you know, he is somewhere and he's doing some thought log and some like type of journal or somewhere basically like writing your thoughts and she's, uh, and, and Jenny says, oh, what you're mostly disabled. She's just telling him again, they're just going back and forth. I don't know what the hell, I don't even know or never pay, stop paying attention because it seemed like every other damn episode they're arguing. And he, you know, they get to the point where he's just like, you need to t tone down your, um, this and this or something like this. And you need to calm down and get that knife out your hand and stuff like that. You, you know, you need to do this. It's kind of like part two, what the hell we seen in the pub episode. So in the end, he, she's like, she puts the knife down, but she comes to him like, you know what, whatever you do, you better do your thought log, you know, blah, blah, blah. You need to shut up, blah, blah, blah. And again, it's just at all. But in between it, Arlen comes to talk to her. Brian Lupin and be like, you know what, I just want to know what's going on, but in terms is because once we have arguments, that negative aura comes on the house, I ain't got time for this shit, um, you know, I got to deal with all these people in my space, you know, excluding, of course, a girl Ashley, but I'm just saying, you know, still, it was just a lot, you know, being put together, and she's just like, you know, we just don't want, you know, what can we do as roommates, basically, to do, um, to do a thing, so like I said, again, another argument between those two, but I think they kind of, did they, end, uh, I, I think, you know, at the end of that, they kind of, like, calmed down, I think, again. I don't know. That's how many times they did that episode. I honestly feel like we're winding the drums, too. So, we see how that goes. And, of course, Jay and Jenna really does much. Jay is, like, again, just feels like he went to pub club. He was like, you know, what well, he wish he could get these numbers, but he can't because here's Jenna right there. And Jenna, <laughs> I think she wrote on, you know, the window or something like that, that Jay is a loser, or did she say loser, or loser, or loser, I forgot, he was talking about the child's family, 
And she would just mess with me, but it really wasn't nothing too much between them, okay? Like I said, as far as right now. Um, but let's get into the Corey and Lauren um, uh, um, fiasco. Now, Corey and Lauren, you know, you know, she, I remember she was cutting his hair a little bit, and she actually plans on actually moving back to Michigan again, and she's getting her job in the salon there. And they still, it's been one of those things is since it's been so long, you know, since they knew each other, basically since they were kids or, you know, tweens or whatever, teens, young teens, whatever. And they continue to, you know, Corey feels like there's something still there. You know, he tries to get away. There's stuff that's still there. She understand me. I understand her. There's one time they go out, blah, blah, blah. And they venture somewhere in San Francisco, you know, and stuff like that. And just hang out, stuff like that. And... If you could just tell whatever bond or whatever good times they had to pick out, pick out stuff, um, you know, they pick up exactly where they left off. And so one of the things was, you know, again, it's just, you know, it's like I said, some of these, these things we're seeing with these couples, the same thing probably we've seen, you know, we've seen, they've been talking about since the first episode, talking about their exes and stuff like that. But I want to get into like to the point where as the feelings arose between them so much, in other words, here's when the infamous night came about, right? Um, now, right before um, this scene happened, Lauren ends up calling her mom. And her mom is basically, they know it's like the same pattern. You know, sometimes just, you know, I, you know, I said this a couple times before, just because you knew somebody for a long ass time doesn't mean it's good for you, you know, stuff like that. And her family feels like this is one of those cases. They're just like, you know, Corey has put her through so much mess. Now, he has said himself, now, you know, all these cast members are in their early 20s and stuff. So for them to know each other for eight years, and this dude was saying, you know, he was a player. Corey himself was a player and stuff like that. I don't know what the side of Lauren is, but I know what the side of him is, okay? So even though they're going off eight years, how many times was he messing with girls and eight I'm just saying. But maybe that's what her family, you know, her family was trying, uh, trying to break about. Like, you know what? You know, here mom basically the end was like, you know what, you better be careful, you know, don't, tr or, you know, are you going to get involved back with Corey again? She's always like, basically a certain point, like, well, no. And then here mom is like, basically like, you know, don't be dropping those panties down, nothing like that. She didn't say, of course, I'm saying it, but she just basically, she told her, don't be happy, don't have sex, please don't have sex with Corey. And then we didn't know that was going to be <laughs> really a warning uh, to what the hell, be, uh, what the hell came about. So anyways, y'all, she ends up you know, one night you see Corey getting into the bathroom of her and stuff like that, right? You know, you know, the shower and stuff like that. And Corey again is sitting here, you know, bringing up memories like the sex ain't a point. She knows, you know, about this and that. Uh, she's looking safe, blah, blah, blah. Basically, he's horny and he just had to, you know, he had to tell us a course in a paragraph. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, I don't feel like going word for word with Corey was talking about. But. They end up having sex this night, this particular night, after who knows how, oh, uh, uh, this particular night, and I don't know how many days, well, you know, at least seven days, whatever, later on. But what I'm saying, you know, um, Laura started having, like, these stuff, this weird feeling in her stomach. She, there, I think is her, Corey, and I think, Je it was, I think, Jen, um, I think it might have been Jen instead of Jenny, which I'm wondering, both of them have long hair, blonde hair, and both your names are damn near similar, except one has an eight. <laughs> but anyway, y'all, so she ends up um, going to uh, some convenient drugstore, I think Walgreens or whatever, right? She asks Jenna to come into the bathroom with her, and they read it. And it turns out she's the one pregnant. And then all of a sudden, once she finds out first, you know, Jenna's asking her, like, you know, are you going to tell um, Corey? And first she was just like, no. But then all of a sudden, Corey, when she's been around her so much, knows that something is up with her, right? So he ends up asking her, what's wrong? What's wrong? And then all of a sudden, she said, I had to go first. She was just saying, I had to go. I had to go back home. And he's just like, no. And then he ends up, she was finally to tell him that I'm pregnant. And as soon as she said I'm pregnant, he just turned and here goes damn credits. <laughs> and that's how it ends, y'all. So we won't know. We see the previews. He's crying. He might possibly be the dad and stuff like that. And that's how it ends on that note. A cliffhanger. But anyways, y'all. That's my interpretation. That's my review. And I definitely will see y'all in the next video. Y'all have a pleasant week, a pleasant night, a pleasant weekend. Thank you for all the subscribers, all the comments, all the likes. I subscribe, let me see. Subscribe. But I definitely will see y'all in the next video. Y'all take care. I love y'all. Bye bye. Thank you all for the YouTubers. 
my YouTube family is for giving me love, giving me support, and my subbies and everybody just giving support. You know, just like thank you, everybody. All right, good night.